Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Piyush and this is video 29 in the series CK2024. And this video will be about storage. We'll look into uh, PVC, PV, like persistent volume, persistent volume claims. We'll look into storage class, a brief introduction about the storage class. And we'll also look into few other storage related concepts in Kubernetes itself. And if you have watched the previous video about uh, Docker, like how storage works in Docker containers, so that would be helpful to understand how it works in Kubernetes. If you are already aware about that concept, then you can start with this video, else I would recommend going back to that video first. And as always, there'll be a GitHub repository with uh, all the nodes, diagrams, all the sample code. Uh, it will be all there along with the task for you to do the hands-on. You can follow along with me uh, in this video, whatever I am performing, and you can perform the task afterwards. And if you face an issue, you know how to reach out. So feel free to reach out and I will definitely help you out with that if you're stuck somewhere. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get into the video. All right, so I am inside my day 28 folder. So I'm gonna create a new file over here and let's call it redis.yml. I'm gonna create a redis pod. So first we'll discuss how volume works in Kubernetes and then we'll see different concepts, okay? So let's create a, a sample YAML to spin up a redis pod. So we have API version v1 and then kind is pod. Then we have metadata. Metadata have few fields such as name, labels, etc. So let's call it a Redis pod. And you can specify label as well, but I'm going to leave it blank for now. So let's have some specs. Inside spec, we'll add some containers, right? So let's take an example uh, from one of the previous videos. We would have it somewhere it'll be easier right so i'm just gonna copy the container section over here okay right so we have a container with the image name as redis and the container name as redis okay now we have to add something called as volume because this container will store some data and that data has to reside somewhere right so we'll create a volume to it and we'll attach the volume to the pod so inside the container uh, we'll add volume mount volume mounts and then we're gonna name it let's call it redis storage okay uh, this is the name and then it has to be mounted on a path inside the pod, right? So let's use the mount path and let's give the directory name. Let's call it data redis. So it will create a directory inside the container and it will mount this volume on that path data redis. Now the volume mount that we are using. So this is the storage name that we have given. So we have to create the storage as well. So what it will do, it will create a storage and then it will bound that storage with the pod, right? So let's create a storage and the storage uh, has to be with the name volume, volumes and the volume name is Redis storage. It has to be the same that we are mounting. So this reference, because we are giving the reference over here, and then the volume type okay so now we are using empty directory we'll see the other uh, storages as well like persistent volume and other provisional static and dynamic provisioning but for now we are using empty directory empty directory because we are not mounting it somewhere currently this storage is not persistent that means whenever a pod restart whenever we stop and start this pod the data inside the storage will be gone this is the temporary storage that will be persistent till the life cycle of the pod not till the life cycle of the container till the life cycle of the pod i'll explain the difference and um okay volume mount i suppose it has to be inside the container because we are mounting the volume on the container and this volume should be inside spec okay so i believe this should be the correct syntax but we'll see 
Now let's apply this YAML. Okay. It is throwing me error. It says V1 cannot be handled as a pod unknown field spec dot containers and dot volume mount dot mount mount path. I guess it is uh, throwing the error for this. Oh, I, 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 I wrote mouth path. It's mount path. Okay, this should be okay now. So let's apply this again. Okay, it says pod created. If we do a get pod, the pod is running. Oh, let me remove the earlier one. Our pod is running. Now let's get inside this pod. Let's do a kubectl exec, exec hyphen it. Then um, sh. Okay, it says red is hyphen. Okay. I'm inside the pod and because we created a volume mount, so there should be a directory mounted on that path. So if I do df hyphen hk, okay, it's not here, uh, but there is a directory run secret Kubernetes service account that we have seen in the service account section. So let's uh, go inside that directory data redis. Okay. I'm inside this directory inside the container and if I do ls there is nothing so let's create a file and uh, let's actually add some content to it hello kubernetes and then I'll redirect to a sample file test.txt okay and this file has the content hello kubernetes okay so currently we have the file at data redis directory over here now if i do a ps hyphen aux and if i kill the redis process oh, okay it says command not found so let's install the ps utility so apt-get update and and apt-get install proc ps hyphen y okay it's installed so if i do ps hyphen aux again okay so here is a redis process running okay so if i kill this process kill hyphen 9 to kill it forcefully i use hyphen 9 and the process id for the running with the redis user is 1 so let's kill this and if i do ps again it restarted the process even though i killed it it restarted it now let's see the impact of it do we still have the data inside the folder so let's go inside data redis okay we still have our file txt okay our file is still still there because the container restart policy retains the data okay so our container was restarted but we have had it mounted that's why it is there so it was maintained outside the process of uh, of the redis process it is within the container that volume was attached to the pod not with the container now if i do an exit and if i delete the pod delete the pod redis hyphen pod and if i'm gonna apply the yaml again and let's go inside the newly created pod and if I go to data redis directory, the file is gone now because the data was not persistent. We used empty directory as the volume and that's why the data was not persistent. So let's see how we can move forward with this. And what do we use in case we have to make a data persistent, which is beyond the life cycle of the pod because pod crashes because of so many reasons and sometimes uh, new new prods are being created with the help of auto scaling and if it is part of deployment then uh, you know deployment rollouts also create new pods and there are so many other reasons so any application that are stateful in nature or many application that needs to retain data has to have the persistent storage let's first have a look how does it work and then we'll do the demo so we have let's say two users over here one is your storage admin who takes care of all the storage within the cluster and then we have a 
user, operator, an operations guy, a DevOps engineer, or a Kubernetes admin, right? So let's just call it a user. So your storage admin, what will do? Um, he or she will provision a persistent volume. A persistent volume is a storage, it's a volume that is a pool of resources, a pool of storage that all of your application, all of your workloads can use. I'll tell you how it works. So let's say um, this is storage admin allocated a persistent volume of 100 GB or 100 GI. Right? That's the maximum that it can get because that is what it used. And then we have different pods running Nginx pod, Redis pod and Node.js pod. Now your user who is responsible for maintaining these pods, that user will create something called as a PVC. A PVC is a persistent volume claim. In that PVC, the user will mention few details. Let me add it over here. Let's say I'm gonna need 10 GB of uh, memory and a different and, and few other details uh, like the read write mode and so on. And yes, uh, let me add the read write mode over here. So read write mode. We'll discuss more about it when we do the demo, but for now, just understand there are different type of modes. So uh, that storage admin will also specify the read write mode over here while provisioning the persistent volume. And over here, user, let's say user define the persistent volume claim as 10 GB and also the user will specify the read write mode over here with the PVC, right? Now, when the Kubernetes try to schedule the pod and scheduler, what it will do, it will match this PVC with the existing PV, right? It will see that we have a PV, a persistent volume that is available and that has enough capacity for this workload and that has the exact same read write mode as well, right? And once it matches with it, it will provision that PVC in the pod. So the PVC will be attached to the pod. That's a persistent volume claim. And there will be a binding between that PVC and the PV, right? So this is called a binding. A binding will be created. This binding is responsible for binding the PV with the PVC and attach it with the pod. Now, how does it work? So there were 100 GB of 100 GI of uh, space available before uh, the binding happened. But now that the PVC has been attached to this, now it is left with minus 10 GI because 10 GI has already been used. So it will be 90 GI left, right? So now that 100 GI will become 90 GI for the rest of the cluster or for rest of the workload. So let me just update it to 90. Now, same thing happen with any other pod. Okay, when there is a pod that needs a PV and user creates a PVC for that along with the pod. So let me just write it over here. And this time also, let's say the user requested similar thing. Okay, so 10 GI of memory and same read and write mode, it will match with the existing PVC and it will create it. Just a second, okay. And this PVC will also be bounded with this persistent volume. Now 10 GB uh, more have been used by the pod. So now this becomes 80 GB. Okay. Now let's say user created another PVC and this time this PVC is requesting around, all right, let's say 90 GB of memory. 90 GI of space, right? What will happen now? So now this PVC will remain in the pending state till the storage admin provision a PV that has enough capacity. Now, you know, this is more than the available limit. So this PVC cannot be binded with this one. So it will remain on pending state and the pod for which this PVC has been created. Let's say this PVC was created for Nginx pod. And this pod will also be remain in the pending state. So there will be no binding with this PV, right? Now let's take another example. Let's say this time 
a user requested a PVC and this time the requested PVC is 10 GB which is within that memory limit but the read write mode is different than over here. So let's say over here we are using read, read once, write many, right? Let's say there is this mode that have been used uh, in this PV and over here the user has specified read many, write many. Let's say for example. So this mode also doesn't match with this. So even though we have enough capacity, this PVC will not be binded with this PV. It has to match with the read write mode as well. Again, this will stuck in the pending state unless and until there is a PV available to provision the request. Now, like this read write mode, I have given just an example. Let's see what are the different modes that we have available. So if I search for persistent volume, Okay, and let's go to an example. Let's search for mode, volume modes or access modes, I guess. Okay, volume mode is file system. No, not this one. I'm looking for access mode. Okay, so we have read write once, read only man many, read write many, and read write once. Okay, so the there are these four available access modes. So instead of read write once, um, let's say this was created with read write once and this new was created with read write many. So this PVC will not be provisioned with this unless we change this mode to read write once. Now the limit is within the available capacity and then we have the same access mode as well. So in this case this PVC will be scheduled on this pod, right? And the binding will be created between the PV and the PVC. Now let's go back to our Visual Studio code and see how it works. Okay, so we will be following this diagram. We'll create uh, the PV, then we'll create a PVC, and then we'll create a pod that will consume that PVC. So I'm in my control plane master node. I'm gonna open a PV.yaml. So let's walk you through what it is. So the kind is persistent volume and we have a label. Then we have something called as capacity. In capacity, we define the storage that we need. So this is the storage that persistent volume will have. So this storage will be available for other users to create PVC and get a slice of it, right? For example, now I'm creating one GB of storage. That's pool of all the available storage. Now the user creating PVC let's say 100 MB storage they need so they can get the slice of 100 MB from that 1 GB of storage, right? So that's what it is. It is the total available capacity for everyone else to use. Then we have access mode. So we have four access mode, read, write many, read, write once, read once many and so on. So you can read the documentation and we use these modes based on the requirements. Then we have a field called host path because we are not provisioning any physical storage. We don't have any physical storage. We are not provisioning in cloud as well. So where would that storage resides? We are mounting the storage on pod, but it has to be reside somewhere, right? The source location. So that source is the host path we are defining. This type of use case is not recommended for a multi-node cluster. This is just for a single node cluster or a test POC sort of cluster, but um, I'm going to tell you how I will do that because I am scheduling the pod only on the control plane node, only the node that I'm working on. So it's kind of a hack, but this is not recommended. I'm doing this so that I can explain to you. I can give the demo else I would have just gone through it, right? So here uh, I have a path in my virtual machine, in my EC2 server, home Ubuntu day 29. So when I am creating this PVC and then when uh, I will attach that to the pod. That pod will have this directory mounted inside it, right? So let me apply this change. Apply hyphen F PV. Okay, now let's have a look at PVC. In PVC, we have API version kind, metadata, and then spec we specify access mode, which has to be same as PV. Otherwise it will not bound it. Okay. 
and then we have resource request now over there we we had capacity request and now we are specifying resource request storage now i need 500 mi of storage out of available 1 gb of storage right so that's what i'm doing and i'm gonna close this kubectl apply hyphen f then pvc.yaml this is applied now if i do get pv you see the status should be bound okay has name capacity is 1 gb access mode is read write once reclaim policy is retained what is reclaim policy reclaim policy means that once the pvc is deleted what will happen to the pv okay pv is the storage the total storage capacity that we have and pvc is what we have requested to be bounded now when we are removing this pvc over here like let's say 10 gb this has been deleted from here what should happen to the persistent volume over here so we have different type of reclaim policies for that one is retain retain means the pv will remain exist but it will be there in the release status and no other pvc can request data from it okay that's what we mean by retain then we have a delete policy delete policy say as soon as the pvc is deleted pv will also be deleted okay then we have the third one which is recycle that means as soon as the pvc is deleted the pvc becomes available again for the other pvc to be claimed so that's uh, three reclaim policies that we have and then we have a storage class uh, we have not touched it yet so i'm gonna explain it afterwards then we have uh, status status is bound okay and yeah that's that's the most uh, important things uh, for pv now if i do k get pvc we have similar sort of attributes in pvc the status is bound over here as well and access mode is read write only we have uh, capacity as well yeah even though we requested 500 uh, so it says because the total it is showing the total capacity of the pv to which it is bounded to right now let's create the pod uh, let's have a look at the pod first vi pod.yaml now inside the pod we have seen till here right we have discussed everything we have created the pod from the scratch till here now we have added one more part to it which is volume mount okay volume mount says the amount path the host path that we have in pv to which volume inside the container it will be mounted to so this mount path because you see this volume mount is under container section that means this volume is mounted inside the container and inside the container there will be a path user share nginx html inside that we are using this particular storage okay and we are giving the reference over here inside the spec as volume it should be at the same level of container and we are specifying which volume are we using okay the name is this and we are using it from the persistent volume claim the persistent volume claim that we had already and it is in bound status so we are using that claim over here and now because i told you like this has a limitation we cannot uh, use this for a multi-node cluster otherwise how will it find like which the host path that we defined like it is of which node right so we can use tens and tolerance for that we can use node selector or anything else so i'm using node name over here right i have specified let's like, schedule this on master because on the master node is where i have created the host path right so i have specified that now there was an issue if i apply it let me apply it first okay it's been created k get pods it's container creating creating it is running now now if you remember correctly when we were discussing about control plane and everything else i've told you that we cannot schedule our custom workloads for example this nginx pod on control plane node something restrict us to do that do you still remember why 
why we were not able to do that and how are we doing it now even though we have specified node name inside the pod yaml there should be something that should restrict us from scheduling pods in the control plane node if you still remember it or if you know the answer let me know in the comment section below okay and if you don't get it i will i will uh, add that in the comment section later on okay but i want you to first do some brainstorming on that like how are we able to schedule the pod on control plane node so the pod is scheduled now let's exec into the pod okay exec and the pod name is task pv pod hyphen hyphen bash okay i'm inside the pod now let's go to the directory to which we have mounted the host path to so it was user share and nginx html now if you see over here we have all the files that were there in our day 29 folder in the ec2 machine so it has mapped that host path to the container volume so it uses pvc and pv for that now if i do a curl on localhost it should return the default nginx web page because this is the file that i've created in my local directory let me exit the container and if i show you the content of day 29 folder we have an index.html over here now it bounded that this is the host path over here it bounded this host path to the nginx path from where the nginx serve its web page to the container and if i like don't exec into the container if i use this command k exec where it is okay let's use k exec hyphen it and the name of the pod was task pv pod now instead of specifying bash we can just do a curl on localhost okay it is getting us the reply from the default nginx web page so that's how the host path work but again it has some limitations as i've told you like it doesn't work for multi-node cluster so that is where storage class comes into the picture i'll explain you the concept of storage class what it is so you see in kubernetes because we are provisioning a physical storage somewhere right and and it should not reside on the node it should reside on somewhere else it should reside on cloud or uh, you know private data center or so somewhere else so that's where we create storage class for this purpose like with third party vendors or with cloud we actually uh, get the storage from so for example okay so these are all the storage class provisioners that we have we can use azure file fc flex volume local storage nfs portvox vsphere and a lot more right and then um let me show you this and then we specify inside um so we create the storage class first okay let's say we created a storage somewhere and then we create the storage class in kubernetes we use the provisioner so this provisioner could be kubernetes.io slash azure file or slash gce persistent disk and so on because that is where we have created the storage and we use the provisioner for that and once the storage class is created we specify this parameter inside the yaml file i'll show you the example how do we do that okay not this one um should be over here let's go to persistent volume so this is using host path it doesn't have uh, 
yeah it, these examples have some extra details so i don't want you to be overwhelmed with that that is why i'm not showing you i'm looking for a simple example it should be there inside okay yeah this one okay so over here what we do is we specify storage class name inside the spec and from there it will assign the uh, persistent volume and persistent volume claim to this storage class has to be inside pv as well as pvc and let's have a look at uh, let's say this one host path we have seen we have seen all these uh, reclaim policy retain recycle and this is how we create a storage class okay and we specify the provisioner by the vendor or the third party this is just an example but this is how we actually request the storage from there and we pass the parameters for secret uh, secret username and rest this is a little advanced for beginners or for ck course that is why i'm not explaining it but just understand what we are doing over here so instead of creating this on the local storage what we do is we create something called storage class and we reference this storage class to a storage in the cloud okay and this storage could be let's say gce persistent disk or aws ebs or azure file share or nfs there are many more available options right so these storage classes refer this storage that has been physically provisioned somewhere in the data center or in the cloud and it basically creates a link between that and our persistent volume now we can request the volume from the storage class there are two types of provisioning one is static provisioning which is what we have seen and we just have to mention the storage class and other details another one is dynamic provisioning with dynamic provisioning you don't have to specify the persistent volume as well and this will automatically create a persistent volume and persistent volume claim for you so um that's the dynamic provisioning of it uh, if you want if you want to uh, read more about it feel free to check out examples from here there should be a dynamic volume provisioning over here see uh we have a storage class and using dynamic provisioning you create the persistent volume claim okay and that's it it will create the persistent volume for you it will also create and if no storage class is provided it will take one of the available default storage class you can have multiple storage classes and there should be a one default storage class that it will take to provision the pvc for you okay i guess that's uh, all about storage classes persistent volume and storage uh, i think uh, we should be good for this video and uh, so thank you so much for watching i will see you soon with the next video make sure you complete the task in the day 29 folder and yeah that's uh, that's about it thank you for watching and i will see you soon with the next video